everyone. My name is Dio Morales, your host of the Gold Squadron Podcast. And we're coming to you live from round four of the Galactic Championship. We are on Coruscant. This is the ultimate. Who will be crowned the Emperor? But before we get to... <laughs> and before we get to all that, my co-host today is... Ryan Moisture Farmer. That's right. Bet better... Roll better, Bet better, fly better. You got, you know what, Dion? I think you have an issue. I think you're subtly grooming an entire generation of degenerate gamblers. <laughs> <laughs> Look at oh, all these man. people. All righty. So um, we're gonna go ahead and get into it, Ryan. Let's break down those lists. Heck yes, we got Kester Smith running hollow with Proud Tradition and Pattern Analyzer. Great mix here. Muse with Proud Tradition, Pattern Analyzer, Lieutenant Revis, and three Epsilon Squadron Cadets. So you've got, you know, five of these um, Thai FO fighters and uh, Hollow, which is uh, a little mini swarm. But he's paired against Casper's uh, Bullins, Bullins, running two Rogue Squadron ex Escorts with Proton Torpedoes and R3 Astromech and Wedge Antilles with shield upgrade. Really interesting choice there. And I love this matchup. Nick, you, you're just killing it with this. Swarm versus aces. These Rogue Squadron escorts at I-4 are very much aces against the rest of the list, aside from Hollow, but Wedge has got that. So, you know, I am very, very curious to see what happens. Obviously, those rogues have locks on Hollow to start, which is, you know, probably your, the target that you're looking to removed from the board um as early as possible right right um, one of, one of the issues though that you have right there is a hollow can sh shrug those off pretty easily but absolutely what it does do is that it makes it get it tells uh it tells caspers that hey i'm I can shoot this ship. I've been given permission by uh, by Kester to shoot this ship because Kester's going to basically distribute those those target locks out. Absolutely. And remember, it's only one of your tokens, right? Yep. So he can't get rid of both. He can't get rid of um, all those locks, right? Um, if oh no, sorry, the, the locks the locks on Hollow are the are the uh, his Epsilon squadrons, the Rogues. Went and target locked uh, the Tie Fighters, the the blue locks. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah, got it's it. it's you. the I have locks out there so that Hollow can get rid of not important tokens. Right. No, totally. Um, but then again, well, I don't know. He's got the R three Astro as well mm -hmm. there. So there's a lot of flexibility with, with the these rogues to lock Hollow if they want to. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean you have you have the option there uh, as well as just having it spread around the swarm, because one one of the, the Hollow's biggest strength is the fact that you can get rid of bad tokens. You can get rid of stress, strain, right. enemy target locks, and and avoid a lot of those issues. The problem is if you have a way to alpha strike like Casper's does, um, your swarm and Hollow doesn't have anybody to to give those tokens away to. The ability becomes blank. It doesn't exist anymore. You lose the flexibility. So honestly, Can we just... go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, finish off the end. I was going to say just the, getting, if you take those proton torpedoes and you can clear four of those TIE fighters off the board, uh, Kester doesn't have a chance. But of course, Kester gets, gets an opportunity to avoid that happening. Can we get a zoom in real quick on um, Kester's hollow? Yes. Because it's this is an excellent little effect. Like, really zoom in on the wing because it's doing something really, really cool. If we can go to the Patreon cam real quick. Patreon I just wanna, cam right there. I just want to give it a, a shout out here because so cool. he's That's got so some cool. a really cool effect happening on the hollow that I think is absolutely worth uh, looking at. Like, Choice. that is that is a super cool hollow yeah, right watch there. The, watch the wings. So like, the, the integration yeah. move. Neat. And you also see that he uh, he also removed the pegs. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's just really 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 cool work there. Love it. Um. <laughs> yeah, that is that's really really cool. It's awesome when you see people who have those type of art skills, coding skills, have uh, yeah, no, put absolutely. that little special f flair on their ships. 
All right, so we have those uh, TIE Fighters are doing a three turn and then barrel rolling to the right, giving a, getting a little bit of extra space. If you ever see people with those lower initiative ships or even, even higher initiative ships barrel rolling towards the board edge, what that does, it closes off a lane on one of your sides or at least reduces the amount of space you got there. And you have more room when you turn back in to avoid being blocked or just having more space to maneuver in the area that you're going into. Yeah, and you see both of these players jockeying for position, um, kind of as it's known by a lot of people doing the toilet bowl, right? Mm -hmm. They're swirling around the outside, both trying to figure out where they want the opening engagement to be. Dion, where do you think Kester wants his opening engagement? Kester right now probably wants uh, an opportunity to have shots on, um, you need to have all the, the entire swarm versus one of those E-Wings. I think if I'm Kester, I'm going to slow roll with a two, two forward next turn, barrel roll to the right, and you can have that engagement with the E-Wings in, uh, in between those clouts. I agree. Um, I'm sorry. My girlfriend just brought me an ice cream sandwich out of nowhere. <laughs> I mean, ice cream sandwiches are pro moves literally out of nowhere incredible uh, anyway um i am just really curious to see where these proton torpedoes end up on these escorts there's just those mind games here with both hollow and the ability of the e-wing to drop those locks is going to be very very fascinating Yep. Now, the E-Wing ability, maybe for anybody who's not familiar with it, why? how do they have target locks already? They have the experimental scanner's ship ability. It says you can acquire locks beyond range 3, and you cannot acquire locks at range 1. So if those E-Wings do get into range 1, you lose the flexibility to move that lock around. But, of course, if you're at range 1, you're already rolling four, four dice. Um one of the problems that E-Wings do historically have is the fact that they have no way to reposition and get a focus token unless you have uh, some type of coordinator in the list, which is why sometimes you'll see people trying a couple E-Wings in AP5 or some other ship that has coordinated it. Right. But essentially you have to pick your spot, decide where you're going to be throwing those proton torpedoes, and if you're wrong, if you choose incorrectly, you will be punished. Absolutely. You need to be able to, I, I, this is wedge and two rogues is a great archetype squad. Um, it's a, I don't know. It's one we see pop up here and there. Um, and I, it, I you need to be able to wipe ships off the board with those yep. proton torps. And the one thing that these epsilons are pretty good at with that shield, three agility and three hull, they're pretty good at surviving. You could, there's the world where you shoot two torps and one of these initiative one epsilons and don't kill it. You know what yep. I mean? Absolutely. Natties are a thing. Variance is there. We've seen it <laughs> many, many, many times. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Where if you if you set it up, the proton torpedoes, you could get four hits. If, uh, if the natties show up, it's, it's hard. Now, here we go. You could see those E-wings starting to get into that pocket between that uh, top uh, uh, two clouds. I'm going to call it cloud one and cloud two there going down into that triangle pattern. But, ooh, I like this. Kester doing that barrel roll towards the top of the board opens up the uh, the lane possibility between obstacles number two and three right there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I like it. All right. Now, Wedge taking that I think you we got Kesper and Caspers here so a Kester and Caspers the t the t the the double K battle here got to make sure that I keep them all straight in my head Oh I look forward to both of us screwing it up You know we always I, you know as podcast hosts we always get made fun of for like, hey, don't you guys like talk all the time? Why do you guys make so many mistakes? But the problem is we have more opportunities to make mistakes with public speaking than others. Oh, so excellent. <laughs> you know, yeah, there's always like a percentage in anything you do. There's a, you know, you know let's say like my failure rate is only 0.01%. The amount of words I'm speaking, that's still a lot of mistakes. So, you know what? Same team, man. Same team. Same team. <laughs> 
Same team. We can empathize with one another. Mm -hmm. All the names we got to read? My goodness. All the four. <laughs> There's mm, somebody's foreign name. You know, I do not have the tongue of practice to fully, you know. <laughs> phrasing, phrasing. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm just going to. Yep. <laughs> yep. The chat, the chat, the chat was gonna, it's gonna jump on uh, that. They were, they were right. I, I, I could practically feel the sweat on their palms. Yeah. You know, <laughs> ready to. The linguistic to type skills. In the That's right. There we go. I, so, I, we're, we're definitely going to get combat in this next round. I think, unless Kester chooses to delay another turn with the swarm moving out. Um, I like Hollow out there in the back. If I'm Kester, you want to burn those proton torps early on the rest of the swarm so that, and then this is what you're looking for if you're Kester. You want the disposable ships to take out Wedge, the proton torps to be burned on your disposable ships, and Hollow to be an ace in the end game against the I 4s. 100%. I think 100%. that is. The, the strat that you're looking for there. Now, one of the things that Kester does need to be careful with, though, is the point spread. Hollow is only worth 60 points. Those rogues are, even though they're generics, they're worth 67. Exactly. Got to watch out for that. And uh, I'm, I'm almost sure that Kester spent most of his points. Nick, how many points does is, uh, is Kester's list? He's at 199. 199. Yeah, there you go. So... Yeah, that not not enough to uh, to to have a points fortress or anything like that. But here we go. We got three banks on the Thai swarm there, ready to accept those rebels in their loving arms. I mean, we're gonna. This is just a a delayed joust, as we call it. They took yep. a few rounds getting into position here, right? But there will be, you know, blood mm -hmm. <laughs> most likely takes the focus no this is this is good for kester again you want to have a focus going into the initial you don't want to have had to do the reposition on that initial joust because that's that's what these e-wings are for they, you mean they caspers are... not kester ah <laughs> god they got me got, him. got me smith Mr. Smith needs a focus. Now he's deciding on the red Ewing whether or not he wants to reposition. That going behind that cloud does look a little tempting. Taking the focus. Yeah, so yeah, Casper's getting in a good spot. He's got his locks, he's got his focus. Will be interesting to see how fast Wedge went here. Wedge in good position to get a nice shot at yellow, probably. All right, we're going to pass the evade to the red TIE yep. fighter. Yep. Hollow using her ability as a, uh, as a support ship. Wedge looking at all his options. Yellow, of course, does have that unobstructed shot. But he wants to try to ace something. Let's find out who he's going at. That cloud in the middle is playing very nicely into Kester's strategy here. But mm -hmm. also, uh, Casper's gets a bit of a benefit, too, depending on where they where these ties go. I imagine most of them will be shooting at that red Rogue Squadron ex Escort because he looks unobstructed. Yep. Going at the red, and it has t two locks on it. So it might be pumping some torpedoes into it. Two hits. Yep. No need to spend the focus. Double evades. Yep. No problem. And then the cloud will give him coverage there, too. Get another. It's free. All right. You know what? That's curious that Wedge would shoot there because it looked like he had an unobstructed shot potentially at yellow. I read That's, that's there. what I was starting to say. That's what I was starting to say as well. But I curious. mean, the, the temptation to focus fire into a single target is pretty strong. The math is so low that you're going to get damage there, though, on yeah. red. Like, I know yeah. you're hoping to strip a token, ideally, mm -hmm. for these torps. But now, like, even with, like, I think you, man, I think you fire at 
if you have the lock, I don't know whose lock is who, or who's two, row, row, row X score. I don't know where the two locks are for... Yeah, I think, I, it's I think on... he would have netted a bigger win if he would have just taken all unobstructed shots, even though you spread the, the damage around. Probably, right? Yeah, you take both shots, because you, you could have gotten, let's see, two... Uh, mm -hmm. you could have gotten, yeah, he could have spread, he could have spread those torpedoes. Oh, around. oh big first shot. Torp, crit, crit, Four crit, crit, crit. Three of those are going through. There is a cloud obstruction. Oh, no, no, sorry, the evade token. Only two, Excuse only me. two, because the evade token. And the crit is a blinded pilot. Right. That evade token ended up being huge there, though. From yeah, Hollow. That, that is Muse, by the way. That is Muse. Mm -hmm. At the start of engagement, you can choose the friendly ship range zero to three and remove its stress. All unobstructed shots also coming from the other rogue. That's yep, taking red. another shot. Just trying to eliminate a ship early. All right, gonna have to use the mods here. Fire control. Happy to do it though. Oh, sorry, not fire control. That's uh, spending the target lock because yep. there's no fire Spend control on these guys. And you get, you know, four hits. One of those should be going through. Yep, he's dead. Yeah, he's dead. Gets Muse with two torps, and that's Muse. that's good. That's something you like. You were hoping to take one out with those proton torps. Now the question is, are you gonna be able to get torps off again? Is Wedge gonna survive the round after this? Who? How much damage are you gonna take in the return fire here? Yep, absolutely. So you, you essentially, with two proton torpedoes, you spent 13 points to get 37, and the amount of points you lose in this engagement will determine your total cost to well, get more that than one ship. Because it's two torps, right? It's 26 points to take well, out. Well, because the, the, the card itself is, is 13, and you use one charge on each. I see. Oh, I see. Yeah. And you're only getting that additional value if you're able to get rid of, if you're even able to use the torps again. This is, this is true. Could potentially be more expensive than that. Yeah. So we'll see. First shot. So what shot? happened in that first? Looks like no damage on that first shot. And two shots on the next one. Here is the blue TIE fighter. We're going into the red E-wing. Got it. Got the natties. Third nice. shot. We're sure we're going in that red E-wing. We're not going into wedge. It's we... the red, right? At range two. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's going at it because it's unmodified. Same same dice chances. Another two hits here. Very nice. Another, Another two, two eights. eights. Lots of great rolling happening here. It's all in the wrists. Hit crit. And that one finally going to get through here. Shield one down shield. on the red yeah. E-wing. Overall, though, great opening engagement for Caspers um, in terms of only losing one shield and taking a ship out. Yeah. Uh, now, I think again, the investment was worth it. Now, the question, right? Go ahead. I think you're about to go where I was going to go. Well, Do it. Again, the strength of casper's squad is this opening engagement right that's where he's strongest with that first punch as he comes into the fight what we're curious about seeing now is how he handles getting mucked up in the weeds by the swarm right if things start to get blocked you know if you're able if these ties can start laying down some you know causing havoc and creating parking lots and you, um, Caspers is unable to require locks, unable to get back around to do more torps. Then these three die ships with no mods can look a little vulnerable, and Wedge can get very vulnerable when he's blocked. But I do really like um, Casper's positioning here because that yellow one is pretty safe. Mm hmm. Yeah. One and very common mistake is the is people trying to keep them in the exact same lane. Then by having right. two lanes, you at least can attempt to disengage with one of them and then keep the assaults going on with the other. The question is, this is a bit of a 50-50 situation because I feel like it 
can be kind of obvious for uh, if Yellow ends up doing something like a one bank, trying to get the, like, the flank of the TIE Fighters. But those TIE Fighters all have the one heart to the left open, and you could end up having an entire swarm in your face. So we'll see what the balance is. you got to choose. Are you disengaging with red because you think that's where uh, the TIE, uh, TIE Fighters are going to be headed? Or, uh, or are you going to do something like a one forward because you think that the turn is going to happen? Now, the one thing that I am looking at here is, so Hollow, Hollow is actually in a, a bit of a precarious spot because these rogues and Wedge are just far enough away to get r really good shots on her if she's not careful, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I mean, even if you don't give them, if, even if it's not proton torpedo shots, you could st at least still have some good range two, maybe even range one focus shots. No doubt about that. No doubt about that at all. Huh. So the Epsilon's going with the two straight there. It yep. uh, looks like we're getting a little bit uh, six of some, half dozen of the other. No strain. That's good. Good for him. I think that I think he wants to block Wedge. Uh -huh. Trying to make a kill box for Wedge here. It looks like the Epsilon took a focus token. Good five straight by that escort. So I was able to avoid the block. Hollow could be in for some trouble. And we did see and the E-Wing. just talking about. You're looking to put a kill box on Hollow here. I'm curious if he is going to boost or, or... No, he focused. Okay. All right. Hollow has a has an out here. You got the barrel roll to the left. You'd be sure able to does. get to the flank. You could target, target lock barrel roll. It's a great opportunity for that. Unless you think Wedge is coming in hot, which I don't, I don't see where he has a, a good shot on you without taking a boost. And that red one, you, you say, wait a minute, now he doesn't have a shot on Hollow. He went too fast. Totally fine. That red um, rogue will be able to three sloop next turn and create space, which they really like to do another proton torp run. Mm -hmm. These E wings love coming in hot getting something off and escaping really quickly out so that they can get another torp run. He avoids the parking lot. It's okay that he doesn't have shots this round. And there's Wedge getting blocked. That looks like there's going to be the good news is for Wedge, shots. I think one of the shots is, I think he avoided a couple here and he'll only have two shots coming back at him from the ties. And there'll be, a, there's obstruction involved for several of them. Like, Wedge could be in a lot worse spots. The two bank was actually beneficial because he, like, uh, he rotated just enough. And Wedge whiffs on that first attack. Yeah, whiff, whiff's bad. You know, you wish that was a pretty okay Yeah, like, didn't champion. even make him spend a token. Or he yeah. could have gotten a shield if he would have just had one hit there. Yeah, Hollow, it's okay. Hollow's going to, it was unlikely Hollow was going to take damage um, this round. A lot of damage because he's only taking that one shot from Wedge, I think. Now, this is a range one shot into the E-Wing. Took the deplete, which is why it's not four. That's going to be two damage into that yellow E-Wing. Oh, no, looks like he no, was shooting. Wedge, isn't it? Oh, sorry, he was shooting at Wedge. My bad. Yeah, I was confused why uh, you said that. So then that. that's too many dice. Did he take a deplete? Yeah. Hold on. Before they roll... I wasn't sure if he took the depletes. But didn't he, I thought he passed it to another ship. Didn't he oh, pass yeah, it? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep, he he print he he yeeted it. You're right. He sent it to blue. Yeah. Yeah, I think he sent it to blue. I'm not now every time you say something I'm like looking around double checking. I mean, you should. Trust don't trust me. I don't even trust me. Two. So, yeah, the Wedge should be pretty okay from these follow-up tie shots. It, it, he doesn't like that he took two shields there from Hollow, but there could be worse things. That's what the shield upgrade's for. Still has a spare. A bonus one. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. I, I missed the uh, the Hollow pass. And did Yellow um, not deal any damage to Purple uh, when, he, when he shot? Clean, my friend. Looks clean. Like, looks that way. That's unfortunate too. You get a nice range one shot like that. 
Yep, Rose Squadron number two. Got nothing. Yep. Yeah. Really uh, nice uh, follow-up round for Kester here. Uh, you lost that oh, ship in the opening engage, but now you lose nothing. You don't get hurt at all and take two shields on Wedge. I would expect Caspers to three-sloop both of these E-wings. Okay. Or at least turn them around. I like that. And I would not be surprised to see Wedge do a four forward or a four K. Probably a four forward so that he could four K the turn after to give himself some space. Mm -hmm. Close those S foils, do a four forward focus boost, just give himself a little bit of space. You do not want Wedge to be caught up in the parking lot. I mean that's one of the, the big strengths of, of this list, right? Is being able to punch hard. You need the range for the Proton torpedoes. So, I mean, if you can generate that, sounds like a win. I agree. Now, here's a question. Looking at the, the status of the game right now, it's 0 to 37. Um, the do, do we think Casper's is in the driver's seat right now. Like I feel I don't I'm not convinced by the score. Like I still don't feel the momentum swinging in one way or the other. Chat, what do you guys think? Ryan, what do you think? You know, I think that Casper's is in a pretty solid spot because of how, you know, two die ships will always have a hard time against three die ships and he didn't get a ton off of these rogues here and the rogues still have proton torps. I would it, my expert opinion is that expert opinion lol um <laughs> that caspers has the slight edge at the moment but it's a, a razor's edge and uh, we'll know this next turn um maybe not this next round but the turn after where these guys joust and re-engage will be pretty crucial to see where we're at and there's that 4k yeah 4k from red and probably a three sloop from yellow yeah gets them back around ready for another torp run All right, and don't forget, there is that pattern analyzer on Hollow as well, which is so good on these guys. Oh, I hadn't even noticed that. That pattern analyzer is fantastic. Yeah, really, really excellent there. So it's actually really interesting because it functions, it can function very similar to Proud Tradition, where you can do a red move and still get an action, but uh, it doesn't just limit it to focus. And he had the extra points to get the pattern analyzed. Oh, he's got Proud Tradition as well. Bonus. He's getting, he gets both. That's he gets, the thing. He gets he's both. Able that's fantastic. To get the focus and the evade on red maneuvers. That's why that combination is so good. Wow. Level two, level nine thousand play. Yeah, you do that red K turn. Pattern allows you to take the action um, to get the evade, and then you get the focus from proud tradition as your because you can perform another action while stressed. And this was Wedge doing exactly what I said. Four forward focus boost. Giving himself some space. Hollow's going to go after Wedge, though, at range three. Here we go. One hit. So people that are um, curious about how that works, that interaction works again... Pattern Analyzer allows you to take an action, one action after you execute a red maneuver. So he executed a red, which was that K-turn, and he took his action, right? Which is an evade. You still have your perform action step, but many times for most ships, you're not able to do that because you're stressed. However, Proud Tradition allows you to take a focus action even when you're stressed. So for his perform action step for Hollow, K-turn, free action from Pattern Analyzer, evade, then taking the focus action he's allowed through Proud Tradition to take for the perform action step. It's a, a very similar situation to how Nian Num gets all of his nonsense mm -hmm. with Pattern Analyzer, doing a boost, getting in a range one, ditching the stress, perform, doing his perform action step. 100%. 100%. Now, one of the things I want to talk about here is... Uh, you know the the approach. We definitely had what you called and uh, and what a lot of us called a delayed joust. We had the delayed joust. Now, 
there, there's also then the saying that goes, when two players joust, one of them is wrong. Absolutely. Who, right? So, I mean, in, in this engagement, points-wise, of course, Caspers ends up ahead because he's able to get a ship off. Do we think that Kester was was wrong to to just try to joust them, go face-to-face? -face? Do you think he I had a different think, approach? I actually think in this particular matchup and in this situation, I think Kester was incorrect to keep his swarm so bunched together. There's no reason for these ties other than maybe hollow dumping tokens to be in a tight, tight formation like this. Mm -hmm. um, now that's obviously for me, easy for me to armchair, right? Mm -hmm. um, hollow works great when he can pass those tokens around, but his jousting potential, unless you can get catch wedge in that open is not as strong as Casper's with all these proton torps and this heavy, heavy offense. Um, and you see now with blue, him starting to spread out a little bit, move the ties around. And I think that's really crucial here. But the other problem is against these three agility ships, you can't just rotate shots. You can't go a two shot, one shot here with two dice, another shot there with two dice. You need multiple shots on three agility ships, especially these E-wings to focus them down. So it is really tough for Kester to choose what that engagement is. And again, honestly, so far, I think he's played really well and kept this in a good spot for himself. Yep. Now, real quick update. Yes, Hollow did lose a shield in that last engagement. We'll get that updated here in a second. <clears throat> yeah, we'll get that. We'll get that set. So Wedge has lost two shields going into here. You can see the E-Wings. We got a one straight and a two straight. I mean, this is this is just Joust 2.0. Let's do it again. We flipped yep. it around. Uh, Nick, if you could uh, change change the the health there on Hollow when you got a second here before our engagement. There's a target lock attempt. We'll dump a couple target locks out there. Second TL going on purple. Purple's in a world of hurt now. All right, yeah, and, and stacking them like that also gives them some flexibility because the red E-wing can uh, actually get shots. Ooh, hollow creeping on wedge. D that Absolutely. five straight did clear. No bump. Likely Very to catch strong. wedge at range two. There it is. Mm, Wedge might be able to boost out of this if his foils are still closed, which they are. He boosted. So he'll do another focus boost. Is he out? He Could is out. Be tight. Yeah. Strong arc dodging by Wedge there. Oh, maybe. Let's see. Wow. That was very close, my goodness. Ha, huh, even the dice are, look at, uh, huh, look at those dice. Dion, the green die there. Oh, that's cool. We gotta give, you gotta give some of those out. <laughs> fancy, fancy. So, Torp going into yellow, looks like. Here you go. Spending the lock. This is the second proton torpedo off of the yellow. Right. And, and he did have a focus there. He did. Oh, great roll, though. Spends for three. And that's that's the danger. Of some Not danger, but only one shield off of yellow from that torp could have been a lot worse here we go two hits
spin that lock. Four Another hits. four. So we've had Dion four, 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 four ton, four proton torpedo shots. All of them have gotten four hits. That's pretty unlikely that all of them get four. Um, I mean, I'd have to do the math on that, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's not a hundred percent. Yeah. Like you're, I think it's 90% for each shot to get four with the focus in the lock. I could be wrong, but, um, across four proton torps, you know, that's, that's interesting. Now that, uh, that did make Revis die. So you see that Revis was removed from the table. Like it's it's still it's still pretty good pretty good odds that you get that, but two hits one out of the box we'll get the re roll here. And that's first shield. Range one shot with a focus. Mind you, the E wing does not have any mods. Two hits. Oh, able able to squeak that one out. No damage. And now we're back to dials. Now zero to sixty-four. Casper's starting to take a strong lead after deleting a second ship in the uh, the extended joust. All right, so. I just had to do the math because I could hear the chat breathing down my neck, right? Being like, well, it's not that unlikely that he got four hits on all four of those Proton Torp shots. You have, um, according to the Gate of Storms calculator, a 30, around a 36% chance to get at least 16 hits, which would be, you know, hits on all of them. Everyone getting four hits. So, I mean, upwards of 65% chance that you don't, that you get below that. Right. right. And you guys, you got to um, remember that includes like three hits on a torpedo, yeah, yeah. right? Like like the chances of all four of those getting four hits is only 35% there. Now, you know, the you're looking at a 73% chance to get 15 or above, so 15 or 16. But um which is very high, but like I'm saying, usually when you're launching those proton the if you're launch launching four proton torps, the majority of the time, one of those will only be three, is what I was trying to say there. Mm -hmm. um, All right. Now. And then especially, Dion, um, especially because on one of those, he didn't have a focus. So if you take a focus off that math for one of them, that now drops... So only a 15% chance to get four hits on all of those. If, if even one of those shots doesn't have a focus. So right. just looking at math there. Now, uh, one of our longtime subscribers, Logo, in the chat says, I, I refuse to subscribe to, math uh, to, math to the mathematicians in the community. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll real hard. And if I'm using hard, I'm going to ro roll real hard twice. I mean, yeah, I think the math is important just to look at when you ask the question of why. Um, or it's really easy to to kind of get lost in uh, in feels, in feelings, right? The like, I feel like I should have had this result. Or, oh, of course, four hits on all four proton torpedoes is what you would expect, right? There's a, there's a lot of, like, the feel math that happens. And I think if you want an explanation, then that's, you, you got to go with the math. But if you don't care about the, the explanation, which is absolutely fine, then, yeah, don't worry about it, fam. Well, I'm just calling, <laughs> I'm just calling the chat out. I'm putting the chat on tilt here because when I read from a bunch of people saying it's not that unlikely that he got four hits from all of those, well, we're talking about what's likely and what's not likely. What's likely, which is what's over 50%, is that that doesn't happen. <laughs> like, it's not that unlikely. Like, that, that doesn't mean anything. Like, I don't want you guys to get involved in your feelings of what you, you feel should happen with four proton torps. Like, that does, the feelings don't matter. Like, math doesn't care about your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> math doesn't care about your feelings. Well, here we go. We got Hollow getting, getting in it, all up in Wedge's business. Took the deplete to do a roll, takes a focus, has some buddies there to pass those along. We saw those S-foils open up 
Casper's anticipating having a shot somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see what the maneuver is here in a moment. And it is a one, fo uh, sorry, a, what was that, a two bank? So might just have the angle to fire at the corner of the purple TIE fighter. Mahalo's going to have a nice shot. Passes the deplete to his friend. Does he have the TIE fighter? He does. He does. He does get the tie. So he will get a, a shot at least first before Range he gets, one. Uh, yeah, before he gets shot at. Unlikely. Again, it's okay if he loses wedge here. Um, you don't, I mean, not ideal, but his rogues are still in a good spot. Another dud shot from wedge, though. Feels bad. No damage. And another range one shot coming into Wedge. Wedge at this point still has a shield, though. I mean, it's... Yeah, yeah. Wedge, I mean, Wedge is still okay right here. I mean, he he could still survive after this round, especially if the dice keep going like that. Let's see. A blank there. Spends the focus. So only three hits going into Wedge right now. So target lock. One evade. So shield and one. So he'll have three hull left with one range one shot coming back and maybe a range three shot from blue so you know i have a i have an interesting uh thought here you know some people are asking has wedge done anything this game uh wedge has drawn fire is what he's done so that's sometimes yeah, the function of a ship could not necessarily be like oh you know i know that his ability is is listed to do damage and it definitely can but there is strength in somebody putting their blinders on and saying, I have to get Wedge. Well, okay, you can get Wedge, and I'm going to focus you down with my other ships. So uh, right. Casper's no, just doing a good job with that. I agree, 100%. There we go. Natty's for the disrespect. A lot of disrespect there. This shot might be going at Hollow. She doesn't have any defensive tokens. Mind you, it's from range three and unmodified. We'll see where the plan is. Yes, going yeah, at absolutely. Hollow. Absolutely, Hollow's the correct choice. See if you can get anything. One shield would be half. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Feels bad. Feels bad. It was unlikely, but still would have been uh, exciting. And we'll get another attack here. Range one into Wedge. Yep. Just one hit. Oh, wow. Lucky. Wedge lucky there. Not taking any damage from that range one focus shot. Got the blanks. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, you guys can hear. I'm sorry, Brandon, you can hear my dog in the background. Yeah, she's been barking for a while. Sorry. <laughs> maybe turn up the... the the background music. Yeah, All on right. that last shot, Dion, on Muse into Wedge, there was an 84% 80, chance to deal at least one damage. So, falling on the, the bad side of the map there. Yeah, my dog's upset because she can't come in the casting room, and my, my wife and daughter have been playing outside all day. So, she's upset. But she doesn't like being an outside dog, so, you know what, can't, can't win. Now, Wedge did take another damage from that range three shot, it looks like. Dion. Say that again? I'm sorry. It looks like Wedge did take some damage, that one damage from that range three shot. Mm. Okay, so, so down to two hole. Yeah. But when we talk about math, right, we talk about dice and rolling dice, right? The average is, like, right there, the, Epsilon, the purple Epsilon Squadron Cadet 3 was unlike like miss whiffed on the shot and didn't deal any damage to wedge which was unlikely but then the epsilon squadron cadet 2 did deal one damage to wedge which mm -hmm. was also unlikely so a lot of times when you mush all this stuff together right sometimes it ends up averaging out the way it would have anyway 
Okay, so a couple people asking uh, about Hollow's locks, the three locks on Hollow. So just a reminder on how her ability works. Those three locks uh, belong to the TIE Fighters. And Hollow, if she doesn't have any negative tokens to pass away and doesn't want to give away her focus or evade uh, to one of her friendly ships, she actually can pass off one of her friendly locks from her ship, uh, from Hollow, either back to that the ship where it belonged to, which then just breaks the lock, or just kind of passes it along just to just to get rid of it. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's a sneaky a sneaky way. And not really sneaky. It's it is a uh, taking advantage of how the ability works. It's really really intelligent, really smart, savvy play. And uh, thank you to Copper Blue for gifting five subs. Thank you so much, getting us to 149, almost halfway. We have a goal at two at 300 as well. I realize I set the timer, uh, the the bar to 300, uh, to 250, not the 300. But it's cool. It's cool. Thank you so much. We're right, we're right there. We're on the precipice of half. Get those half points. Exclamation point prime. You can use your Amazon Prime account. You get a free Twitch sub every 30 days. Thank you to everybody who has taken the time to do that. All right. So going into the next round, uh, swirly dice cam. Yeah, that's uh, that's just like a texture texture map that's on top of the on top of the dice that Kester Kester brought, and he asked his opponent if he can use it, and they said no problem. So we good. We good. All right, going. Oh man, you know one of the. I'm worried about Hollow, Brian. I'm worried about Hollow. Those E wings are in prime position to pounce. They don't have to move very fast. Nope. Now keep in mind that you know you've got a stress and a strain on Yellow, so Yellow's probably gonna have to go through that cloud again, mm -hmm. um, and won't have that many mods. But Red's in a good spot as well. Um, if I'm Wedge here, man, it's tough because of where these other ships are. What, what are you thinking on Wedge? Wedge, what are you gonna do? Okay, so if you if you are, if you're okay with losing Wedge this turn, where you're, you, you've kind of decided it's all right, you just bust a 4K and get a shot, then you die. Yeah, at least, I mean, at least you, you get something. Um, I think that is the your best chance to actually get a shot a meaningful shot before Wedge dies. Um, if you're trying to be cheeky, you maybe bust a Talon roll and see if you can catch Hollow getting greedy and turning in. I, all those seem good options. I feel like I want to do a three bank with Wedge. Now, obviously, that now that that purple has done that, that may have been not the correct choice. But a three bank, close my S-Foils, three bank boost, I think would, focus boost would be pretty good there. But again, what do I know? And right here, the the blue Epsilon Squadron trying to take up the space where uh, the E-Wing or Wedge would land. Good block there. Two forward, go bust through the cloud. Going to get a nice range one shot on the Epsilon, the blue one. No strain All from the cloud. though, on these guys, because unless, uh, let's see, does that escort? So keep in mind, red has a lock on purple still. Mm -hmm. And so, so, has the uh, the re the arc. I think red has the arc on purple. Hollow does a three bank. Yeah, that's a good move. Has that deplete, which will just pass somewhere, probably to green because green doesn't have a shot. No, we we saw the wings get closed. Ooh, just barely lands that. Just barely yep. lands that. We'll 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 flip over to the Patreon cam for you guys to see that. Oh Oof. man, just just barely. Unfortunately, I don't think he's going to be able to boost though. But he does, I think, get out of arc on purple, but not out of arc on hollow. All right. Here we but go. he was hoping he'd be able to boost there around mm -hmm. that cloud. Oh, Yo, hit, hit, crit coming in from hollow. But, oh, man, but he gets the two evades, 
What is this? Is this a direct? Panicked. Panic. Wedge staying alive, needing to still going to have one shot from blue, but that'll be after yellow gets an opportunity to maybe fire that way. I think or you shoot with red first to see what you've got available to you. Yep. Hello to Isofane in the chat. Isofane, what's your record? Two and two. Oh. Good run, though, man. Yeah, you got you got all your choices here. Oh man, I I'm I think I'm firing both at Hollow. At this point, you you, well, you need don't have to... a torp on on Hollow though. You know, you don't have a torp on anybody. Uh because your torps no, no, are no. gone. Really? Are both torps gone? I think so. No, on both of them. Yeah. Are they? The yeah. Spent. Okay. Well, you still have a lock on on purple though. But yep. is he have an evade? Yeah, he's yeah. got he's got a squiggle, but he's gonna go ahead and fire at uh at the epsilon. Purple. I mean, take your mods when you have your mods, right? Mm hmm. He's gonna spend that lock. I think you do. Got the three. He did get the three. Having really strong. Oh man, only has the evade to convert one, so purple is gonna take two damage. And that's half points there. Yep. Get in your points where you can. And let's see where blue go or yellow goes. Do you take the range one or the range three? This is a tough choice. Range one on blue or range three on purple. Everything is unmodded. Oh, this is a fun. Let me screenshot this for <laughs> Do it a fun quickly. math question. What's the better shot here? Looks like he's going after blue. Yeah, so I mean, that's your best chance, chance to actually... On, on your own dice, get the most number of hits. Yeah. And another reason you do that is there's that very, very, very slim outside chance. You roll four, and he blanks, and you kill him and save Wedge. Yep. All very unlikely. But... You could also you could have also stripped the focus off of blue yeah. if you put him in, exactly. a, in a tight spot, but right. not, not this time. Which is why I think that was the correct choice. So only one Wedge needs a squiggle. Got he it. gets it. He gets it. Wedge will live for another round, though he is double stressed. Wedge will live forever. And this is important here that even though Wedge has not done a lot of dam any damage here, he is continually staying alive, which is crucial. Mm -hmm. Burning shots, burning turns, burning actions forcing Kester to spend more and more resources. Now he's got to decide, oh, gee, if Wedge were gone, he can now focus on these rogues. But now he's got to waste more resources trying to chase this double-stressed Wedge. Because he would have loved to just be able to turn in this next turn, turn purple back in and then barrel roll, get hollow back around or turned in. Green is certainly probably going to do a one hard back in um or two and blue could sloop or some other th but now blue has to decide okay is blue gonna do a one hard left and try and get like cut wedge off lots of interesting choices here now for those of you who are wondering we did have over the threshold of 149 players so we will have a top 32 tomorrow 32 nice. 16 8 4 and the final also, um, during the next uh, the next break we have between rounds, we're going to start talking about the Flight Club Championship. It's going to be the next series we're running here on Gold Squadron uh, that's focused on a little bit more casual play and specifically different list building scenarios. Um, it's going to be really interesting. It's going to include uh, six, excuse me, five different ways to qualify. And basically, depending on how you perform in the qualifiers, by the way, you can perform in, uh, you can play in as many qualifiers as you'd like. Uh, your best performance will slot you into a certain championship event. And then we'll basically have three different championship events, depending on your level. That way, um, you end up playing against people of the similar skill level in that championship. It just opens up uh, some different possibilities 
possibilities, and that means we're going to have three different champions there. It's all built off of the Gold Squadron Flight Club ranking system. You will be crowned either as a recruit, a veteran, or an ace. And, of course, everybody wants to be an ace, but we'll find out who will be crowned the ace or an ace. You're an ace in my heart. Oh, thank you. So now, yeah, purple has to, you know, try and burn another turn on wedge. This is where you might get a cheeky three talent roll. Oh, wait, you can't wedge is double stress. I was going to say, if he wasn't double stress, he could do a three talent to the right with wedge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. he's stressed, so he doesn't have a lot of options. But red is now focused up, ready to try and get some damage on purple. Blue moves up, gets does not get blocked or yellow moves up does not get blocked by blue doesn't look like yellow's gonna have any shots might be able to clip hollow here it's gonna be close though might have just the edge of hollow now if you're red what do you do do you take depending on what hollow does here do you take your shot at purple or do you now take a a, a really clutch shot at uh you know, hollow or purple. That's the choice there, right? Yeah, I mean, hollow is more points. Yeah. That's just where that's where I'm looking. I'm just trying yeah. trying to look for value. Yeah, exactly. I think if you can get even just two or no, sorry, one shield on hollow is huge. Mm -hmm. Getting those half points. 18 minutes left. You're looking at everything. Going to be taking a deplete there to get the barrel roll, getting out of range one. Smart, yep. smart. That yep. uh, And taking a boost as an action. Interesting. That means no green tokens. That does become a, an, an interesting uh, prospect there, I think. I think uh, I, nice. I mean, you, I don't know if it's nice, but too hard from Wedge. Just hoping, praying, <laughs> loving, eating. <laughs> That he can not, that he can survive. So the deplete gets passed over to purple and unmodded shot into wedge range two coming from hollow right now. I do find it interesting. So two there. Wedge, I believe, is strained, so he's going to be toast. Dead wedge. Dead wedge. F. Oh. <laughs> F's in the chat. Kester spent a lot of time trying to take wedge out, though. Gave up a lot of positioning here. He only has now one of these that are primed to work on these rogues, both of which still have, you know, two shields. Now, what the rogues need to be careful of, because they're so expensive, is when they lose those shields... That's that's a lot of points mm -hmm. that Kester can get. So what does he do? The range one on purple or the range two into hollow? I go, I I go to hollow. Two. I think you take I, that range two. 100%. You have the mod. Have a, I think that's what mod. makes a difference there. He has nothing, and you, just, and you only need one shield to get that half. A 60-point hollow. And here's the thing, you'll have more opportunities to get purple as well. Who knows yep. how many more opportunities you'll get for hollow. No! Oh, doesn't need the mods. And that's what you want right there. Just one shield. That's 30 points now for Casper. Just building up that lead, making it harder for Kester to kind of overcome it and come back. Now, let's say each of these rogues is 67, right? Mm -hmm. If Kester gets half on one, that's what, 34? Right? Yep. No damage here. So 34, that would put him still behind. Even if he gets half right now, he needs to have two of these things. Half or kill. Yeah, you, you gotta... <laughs> You got to get aggressive with the the tie of foes, and I think I think you said it. You know the the amount of time that has been spent chasing after wedge wedge has just yeah. been a, a big distraction. Now Hollow's still an ace in this situation. He has no one to threaten that i five. He's moving super last, right? But now that you've gone, you've gotten half here. 
you're looking at the clock 15 minutes if you're caspers don't worry about hollow anymore like you've done what you can with him unless you have a really clutch shot see where you can get points there is a lot on the table here you could kill purple that's more points you could get have on these on green or blue right um you take whatever your best chance is on every shot to build your lead up a little bit more okay where are these e-wings gonna go i mean you you have also i'm looking at, at yellow right now you have the sloop to the right open i mean the e-wings the e are, are just in a, they're in a great place they're in a great place you just got to be careful yeah. not to get isolated yeah looking at a couple of things on my side over here yep yep The other thing we're going to be showing off later today um, with the with the flight club announcement um, on the website. It's not quite live yet. I'll be making it live when I after I do my announcement. Um, we also have previews of some of the prizes, not all of the prizes, because uh, I haven't gotten all the, the, the all of the designs returned to me yet. Um, soon, TM. But excited, excited to show off uh, some of the awesome stuff that we have coming. And I know that we have some more casual players that um, that might be intimidated by, you know, oh, my, all these meta players playing in Galaxies. I don't want to play. But uh, Flight Club is honestly, it's, it's going to be for everybody because it is by ability base. We have different groups that will end up being created. Uh, it makes it it makes it so that, um, you know, it's it's a we get to put a sorting hat on people, Ryan. Makes well, it, make... I mean, a little bit, a little bit. It's not, I guess, it depends how you want to talk about the fans, because if you want to tier the Hogwarts houses, right? Like, we're sorting you hat into tier one, Gryffindor, tier two, Hufflepuff, tier three, Ravenclaw, tier four, Slytherin. <laughs> Weep Slytherin tears, all you <laughs> sneaky jerks. <laughs> So I'm I'm excited to see uh, to see people's reaction. I, I'm actually really excited about the prizes. I think there's some cool stuff in there. Show it off here in a little bit. Um, when are you going to give away a um, life size cutout of you? Uh, once I create a life size cutout of me. Well, I want you to get on that. We Asa had, Asa Graf did it a long time ago with Tyson. <laughs> hit so. hit crit <laughs> into the E wing. Got two squiggles. The crit does hit the shield. Yeah. Really hot greens for Caspers in this game, for the most part. Sometimes that's all you need. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. What do we got here? Three there. How much damage? So there's there's blue getting just dunked on. Mm -hmm. That's another, you know, we've got another half points gained by Caspers. It's 61 to 107. Still got and 11 maybe minutes left. Blue even dies right here, too. That's a range two shot. Next roll. Nothing. Nope. Nothing there. It's okay. You did. You, there's good good work being done to get more half points on blue. And now, if you're Kester, you have to start looking at where you can maybe take some risks. Yeah. Um, we'll see how these epsilons go onto red. But avoided. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's another range three shot. If you can get one shield off red, it really helps you climb back into this thing. Does the guys reroll? Doesn't get any conversion there, but two are going through. No heroic here. Shields are down on the E-wing. 
Yeah, and so that's half on yellow, and red's only one away from getting half. That's a big chunk. That's going to put Kester close, 95 to 107. Exactly. All right, now Casper's has got to be careful, and that's, you know, we talked yep. about it early. The there is a when you bring these high point costs to chips, a yep. lot of times they can hit really, really hard. But when you hit that half point threshold, it yep. hurts. It hurts Gives real up a bad. Lot. This is how this is different than first edition. If you remember, like this would be a much better squad in first edition because now he'd be three damage away from giving up all those points, but. He's in a, and I think we need to adjust red. Red has one less shield on yes. the overlay. Um, uh, it is, let's look at the math here. Okay, so if he, if Kester gets one more shield off of red, right? Mm -hmm. Which seems likely given the board state, he'd gain another 34 points, which would put him at the 129 and if Caspers can kill something or get half on another one of these, like either kill blue or get half, that would give him another, was it, was half of 25? Oof, uh, uh, 13, 13 points. Mm -hmm. So that would put him back ahead, right? So the, the pendulum will be swinging a little bit more. We're looking, with nine minutes left, we're looking at one or two more rounds of combat. I think that Kester needs to look at how he can preserve the ships they still has on the board like not lose half on green or not let purple or blue die and really do everything he can to get that one shield off of red. I'd be looking at peeling away with blue and purple and letting hollow get that shield and then trying to get away and keeping hollow alive. You got to look at how you can every permutation possible to, or, you know, alternatively for Kester, he could say, I'm going to kill one of these E wings. Yeah. You're just going for it. Yeah, just go for it and say, I'm just going to kill, you know, the the red or yellow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the uh, aggression can be rewarded if you uh, if you pick your right spot and you go into a to to a face off with another ship. But if you kill it, then you're fine. <laughs> well, because yellow, only, I think your overlay is still wrong. I think yellow only has two hull, Dion. So oh, that's it, it did take a hull. You're right. It did take now, that's it. your bet to, like, take out yellow. Right. Mm hmm. Ooh, gets, so yellow bumps gets bumped, but there's no unless unless hollow gets a gets a shot on yellow. Yeah. Yellow should be OK. This is a very important action here for red. Needs to look at everything to, to try and help out yellow and keep yellow alive. You don't want hollow to get an action here. Red's not going to be shot at this turn unless I think what i think he's looking at that two forward if hollow does a two forward does it bump or not what do you what say you dion two forward uh yeah i think he'd be good i think he's fine who's fine do you think hollow would be fine hollow, with the two hollow, yeah sorry let me i think hollow <laughs> I, would be fine yeah i think so too which leads me to think that red should barrel roll here <laughs> do a barrel roll yeah because the slowest the slowest that uh hollow can do is that two forward I really think red should roll. Oh, he's, he went for it. He went for it. He's going for it. Yeah. That's the correct choice. Also means next turn, he could one hard depending on the boar state because these things have one hards, right? It, yes. Oh, but you know what, though, would be the, the 4D chess play is if Hollow saw that coming and then did the K turn right here. Like <laughs> <laughs> Certainly would be, but I think... Yellow is in a really precarious spot. Um, I think Hollow, if he did the two, wouldn't get blocked. Oh, he does get blocked with the two. Mm -hmm. There it is. Clutch play by Red there to block that. So that this shot that Hollow has on Yellow, I believe, is obstructed through the cloud. Mm. That's the only shot on Yellow with two hull. Yeah. So likely that Yellow survives here. I mean, maybe not with a roll oh, like that. My goodness. Pop, pop, pop unmodified just roll them plenty of dice does he get five greens with an auto conversion though oh one's out the box you need it to be a blank uh oh he rolled two he rolled two eyes oh there okay, it is there's there it the is conversion. there's the freebie okay 
The best blank is the, the best. Blank. There it is. <laughs> the one time you're praying for the blanks. That's so funny. I do love when so that again, happens. Casper's still up right now. Five minutes left, probably only one more round of combat. If Casper's is looking at red and yellow, you can just, with the speed of these things, they have five forwards, remember? Red can do a five forward boost and yellow could do, you know, a three bank or a, a three bank in or out, you know, to get out of combat. He doesn't need the points. We have to choose right now if you're Casper's, do I run away or do I try and get in a position where I get more points? I mean, you, you, hmm. you have to choose because let's see, let's say yellow bales, right? Let's say yellow bales real fast and hollow somehow gets, you know, does a, a three or two hard or whatever. And is able to get a shot on you for whatever reason. And you're, he gets that one half point on you on oh, or two damage to kill you or red somehow gets that one damage now you're out of a position to, to retake the lead so if you're going to run you have to be know that you're not going to take any damage back put yourself in a strong position to not get shot at and that's the choice that caspers has to make right now run or fight Fight or flight, baby. I mean, what what would you guys I mean, do? I would, I'm a coward. I'd be Ch running. Ch Ch chat, what would you do? Run, fight or flight? Make Boop. a pull. Make a pull. Ah, ah, ah. Uh, quickly, 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 quickly. Run or fight. Or fight. Run or fight. Run or fight. Run, fight. Pull is up now. One for run, two run. for fight. What are you doing? One for run, two for fight. The results are running in. <laughs> oh, the my the little little slip there. Uh, results are coming in now. Uh, Fifty-seven forty-three right now. Looks like run is the favorite. Oh, it, it's oh, look at them go though. Look at the split in the community right now. Ninety-three votes, hundred votes. We got two thirds on run, one third on fight. Interesting getting in the, the psyche of the X Wing players, the X Wing community here. We're in your we brain. Got Pennsylvania man. happening. Sorry. I, <laughs> sorry. Stop sorry. it. I'm Stop sorry. it. I'm sorry. I told it slipped out. <laughs> that one slipped out. I apologize. I'm sorry. Shake it by head. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. That that's my fault. That's my bad. That's my bad. I apologize. Shame. Give sh shame in the chat. <laughs> All right. We got the E wings turning <laughs> in here. He chose to fight. Chose a fight. So we'll find out. Forty four percent in the chat right now. He also chose to run. He chose both. He just both. <laughs> Six of one, half dozen of the other. So he's like, why not both? I'm, I'm nervous for yellow, though. I'm real nervous for yellow. He is parked behind that cloud. Mm -hmm. I think Casper's got to hope that this round takes a minute and a half. All right. You can see how quick Kester's moving, too. He's got to move him. He knows he sees the clock. Yep. Look at him go. Only one. Has the lock. Oh, sorry, oh but... that's three. One, two. And he'll get the cloud. He'll get the cloud. Ooh. Oh, something popped up on the screen. Oh, sorry. That was my bad. I was opening the, the window to check the timer. The, the event time has clicked, so I need to call it. One moment. So no shot there. Got 45 seconds left. Time. This is the last round. Oh, that looks like time was different on their table. So it's well, 35 it's seconds. Be, remember, it's the uh, the event timer supersedes the table timer. Oh. Yep. I don't, I don't know if Kester knows that. Yep. 
because that was the last shot for the round yep, right there. That was it. All right, so congratulations, Caspers, getting the W, 95 to 120.